I hope that the harmonic concepts that we've been discussing in this course have not confused you too much. If you already have a background in music harmony, this is just the ABC, but if you're not used to thinking in terms of grades, intervals and harmonic progressions, this can be a little complicated at the beginning. So let me briefly recap the essence of what we've discussed so far. When you have established that a chord progression is in a certain major key, you automatically know that for improvising you can use number one, the major scale of that key, number two, the natural minor scale of the sixth degree of that key, and we call this the relative minor, or number three, the minor pentatonic or blues scale of the sixth degree of that key. Let's make again the example of C major. If you have a chord progression in the key of C major, you can improvise using the C major scale, the A natural minor scale, which is the sixth degree, or the A minor pentatonic or blues scale. That's because A is the sixth degree, I repeat again, or relative minor in the key of C. The question remains though, how do I figure out what key a chord progression is in? And your big helper here is the magic table we keep referring to, the one that tells you the nature of the chords built on the various, on the seven degrees of a major key uh, scale. At the beginning you will have to use the table, but soon enough you will learn to immediately spot chords and understand keys in a breeze. In order to practice these concepts, we now look at autumn leaves, the chord progression that we've seen in the previous lesson. The reason why autumn leaves is so widely used in jazz is that it is a full 32 bar, rich sounding, harmonically beautiful song, and it's all in one key. And in order to understand why that is so, you need to look at the chord chart again, step by step and analyze chords with the help of our magic table. Since you've practiced comping on it, I hope, you will have noticed that sections A and B contain the same chords, only they're arranged, they're disposed differently. This means that we only need to look at section A to understand what key we are in, because there are no other chords in section B. So let's look at it. The first chord is a minor seven chord. What would I automatically expect? That that minor 7 chord would be followed by a 7 chord. And sure enough, you have a C minor 7 followed by an F7 in the first two bars. This is a neat Santana style 2-5 progression, isn't it? And again, what would you automatically expect at this point? That a 2-5 progression would be followed by a 1 chord to complete a 2-5-1 progression. Lo and behold, the third chord is indeed a B-flat major 7 chord. So 2-5-1 in the key of B-flat major. Since we have a 2-5-1 in the key of B major, we now strongly suspect that the song is indeed in the key of B major. Is that right? Let's look at the fourth chord in the chart, and that is an E flat major seven. Look at my fingers as I count. One, two, three, four. Right, we're in the key of B flat. This is grade one, B flat. Two, three, four. So E flat is the fourth degree in the key and on the scale of B uh, flat major. Go look at the magic table, and what do you find? That E, the fourth degree, is a major seven chord. So, two, five, one, four. The first four chords in the progression are all in the key of B flat major. Now, the next chord in the chart is a minor seven flat five chord, is our A minor 7 flat 5. And from uh, the magic table, we know that there's only one minor 7 flat 5 chord in a major harmony, and that's the 7th degree. What is the 7th degree of B flat major? A, isn't it? One step below e flat, uh, B flat, you have A, and there you go. 
we're still solidly, strongly in the key of B major. The next chord in the chart is a bit tricky. It's a D7, and as a dominant 7 chord, you would expect it to be part of a 2-5-1 progression. But in this case, it's clearly not. You don't have minor to 7 to major. No, you have a half diminished going to 7. In uh, the table you see, I've put the D7 in brackets because there are very good reasons to use it in a B major context. But these are a little complicated reasons and I will explain them in a later lesson. So let's assume with a little bit of forcing that, that D7 is also part of a, a B flat major harmony. And we're left with the last chord in the progression, which is G minor 7. And look again at my fingers as I count the grades in the progression. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this is my G, okay, G at the octave. G is the 6th degree. What does the magic table say? That the 6th degree is minor 7. Look at the chart, G minor 7. So, in conclusion, all the chords of autumn leaves, except one, belong harmonically to the key of B-flat major. And as I said, I will explain later that this exception, the D7, still can be treated as part of a B-flat major harmony. Now, having established that we are in the key of B-flat majors, what scales can I use to improvise? Number one, the major scale on the first degree which obviously is B flat. Number two, the natural minor scale of the sixth degree, which in, his, in our case is G, or the minor pentatonic or blues scale on, of the same sixth degree. Now you can tell your family and friends that you will not be available for the next year or so because you will be immersed in the joy, I tell you, the wonder of exploring the infinite possibilities of these three scales in all their fingerings, all over the neck. And you will keep improvising on this beautiful progression forever. <laughs>